and the transition plan that we have built together. I'm proud of all of the work that we have been able to do in partnership, including shifting away from the inequitable student-based budgeting, completing the change to a school safety model that doesn't rely upon school resource officers, but it focuses on the success of our black students in particular. Our collaborative work also improves special education services, I will just say, as I finish my comments, the most legit legitimate existence of anyone in this country is the legitimate existence of a black man. Now, I understand that there are individuals that wish to use this as a political opportunity to sow seeds of doubt. But make no mistake about it. I am going to stand firm and flat foot to ensure that our students get what they deserve. Because just for the record, I was legitimate when I took an arrest against other administrations when they were closing down black schools. I was also legitimate when I went down to Springfield to fight for a fully elected school board. You know, again here, I also just want to just acknowledge the fact that that since I've been in this position, this position of authority, So as you can tell, that they clearly expect the black man to do everything in less than two years. But I will say this, though. I do appreciate the energy. I do. Because I do know that if things were still, it would mean that we are moving in status quo. But the fact that things are moving and shifting it means I'm doing exactly what I was elected to do. And we've done it in a very short period of time with the previous board, collaborating to improve special education services, increasing accountability for the renewal process for charter schools, establishing and embarking upon a five-year strategic plan that neighborhood schools will be prioritized, that sustainable community schools is the model in lieu of school closures. I have no doubt that the new board will continue and build on the progress using the five-year strategic plan as we guide and collaborate with stakeholders, community partners, to bring about the transformation that this city deserves. And I'm proud to announce that we have our first iteration of my recommendations to be on this board and be a part of this transformation. That's Olga Batista, Michaela Blaze, Mary Gardner, Reverend Mitchell Johnson, Debbie Pope, Frank Thomas. I'm confident that these new candidates will work to lead CPS into the world-class school system that our children deserve. This group is the first step of more nominations that will ensure a smooth transition into a hybrid board, of which I'm the only mayor in the history of Chicago that fought for an elected school board and kept his promise to ensure that the school board would happen. And I will continue to nominate Chicagoans who are dedicated to meeting the needs of our students, who are deeply rooted in their communities and represent the diverse constituencies who actually send their children to the oh. Chicago public schools. Oh. 
because, oh, by the way, I'm the first mayor in the history of Chicago to do just that as well, sending my children to the school district right here in Chicago. When I ran for mayor, I promised to transform our public education system. I'm a man of my word. And that means bold leadership in a moment that doesn't nibble around the edges and look for incremental gain. Our people in this city are tired of political leaders that want the status quo to nibble around the edges and then when children don't get what they deserve, they blame the very communities that they've disinvested in. Wow. Not on my watch. <laughs> status quo, the past mistakes that have left our students behind, we're not doing that. And then the so-called exports, the so-called fiscally responsible stewards are making the same argument when our people wanted to be liberated and emancipated in this country. The argument was, you can't free black people because it would be too expensive. They said that it would be fiscally irresponsible for this country to liberate black people. And now you have detractors making the same argument of the Confederacy when it comes to public education in this system. These are the people who package these gimmicks, lied to our people, stole money from our people, refused to pay into the pension system, left the taxpayers with the bill, and for me to fix it. But we're going to build a world-class school district, you all. Because the vision of the status quo is to leave our children behind, fire teachers, fire teachers' assistants, fire custodial workers, fire nurses. That is their vision. My vision is about building a system that works for everyone. Imagine our schools down a pathway of new discovery where you don't have to have senseless cuts and real disruption and chaos. You can actually have a school district that doesn't embrace mass layoffs, massive school closings, austerity. 1,100 black students are still missing from 2013. This district did not find those children when the schools were closed. That fiscally irresponsible decision have left decades and tears of destruction, and that ends now. I am the only mayor who has taken an arrest, whose lobby legislators, who marched and organized for more investment for our children. The city leaders have long resisted investing in our children. I am no longer going to accept the status quo. Amen. We believe that we can have a world-class system that not only creates sustainable community schools, but a system that embraces the arts, that embraces the trades, that makes sure that our children can participate in sports. We have schools right now who do not have dollars for buses to take their kids to sporting events. We have a system right now that can't adequately bus children to the very spaces that they say they believe in. So that is, I was elected to fight, and fight I am. Thank you. Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News.